Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Creative Congo tutorial. My name is Calvin and I'm going to be talking to you about scripting in After Effects today. And specifically we're going to be looking at the tutorial that Jesse did uh, a few weeks back and uh, in particular technique number two right here, the offset expression. Uh, I'll also go through a couple of you know, some sort of background on scripting and scripting in After Effects as, as well as talking a little bit about some of the tools that are out there and the, the resources to, to help you learn more because scripting can be uh, a little intimidating um, but once you learn some very basics there's a lot out there that can help you do some very powerful stuff without having to know too much about programming or programming theory or anything like that. So this offset expression is, is pretty cool. So we want to be able to do animations like this where we have sort of our base layer that is uh, controlling the animation and then we have you know any number of uh, child layers that are just following that at uh, a time offset. Now, you might be trying to do this type of thing, and if you, if you do it a lot, it's kind of a pain to have to type in the expression every time. So, well, maybe you put it into a text document and, you know, uh, copy and paste. So you don't have to type it out every time, but you still need to open that text document, copy and paste, you know, for every layer that you're adding. You know, if you want to add that expression to eight layers, you have to copy and paste to, to eight separate layers. Or, you know, you can paste it to one and then, copy that specific property from that layer and then paste it into the others. But something that's a lot easier to do is to put this functionality into a script, something that can be run over and over and over again with just a single click of the mouse and uh, apply this behavior to uh, any number of layers. So before we actually get into the script, uh, let's just get a little bit of a background on scripting in After Effects. So the scripting language for After Effects is JavaScript, and if you've done any sort of web development or anything like that, you've probably heard of JavaScript. It's, it's a, a great language, it's very lightweight and very easy to use and uh, you know, can, can be very powerful. Now, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail here, but I can give you a point in the right direction. One website that I go to all the time is W3 Schools. This will give you a great overview of JavaScript and the different things that, that you can do. So you see here there's different topics that are just core to JavaScript as a programming language. Uh, another uh, great resource which is absolutely necessary if you're going to do any After Effects scripting is the After Effects scripting guide. So what this has is just a, a quick overview of some of the basics of programming basics of JavaScript, but also those things that are very specific to After Effects, like the structure of, uh, of objects, which we'll get into later, but this is how you access different layers, comps, properties, effects, all those types of things. So this will give you a, a good start for everything that you need to know to be able to dive right in and do your scripting. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Extend Script Toolkit. This is our programming environment. And it's actually got some great tools built into it that are going to help you learn more and sort of navigate the beginning part of getting into scripting. Because you might know JavaScript, but you don't necessarily know how to access things that are specific to After Effects, like what objects do I have access to? How do I access them? What functions do they have? What properties do they have? So to be able to look at that, we actually go to our help menu here and we go to the object model viewer. And now what this is is a repository of information about all the different functionality that is uh, available to you that is core or central to After Effects uh, scripting and scripting in the Creative Suite in general. You go into this little drop down here and you can select different types of uh, classes. So you have core JavaScript uh, classes. These are things that are not specific to After Effects, but are just JavaScript. Things like arrays, booleans, which are true false values, dates, error file. So, you know, if you want to sort of acclimate yourself with functionality, with syntax, you'll want to sort of go through these things. And the other area that's important to us here is the script UI classes. Now, what that gives us is information about different things that we can use when we're creating user interface for our scripts. Things like 
checkboxes or input boxes, drop-down lists, things like that. So you'll want to step through this and look at each class and just sort of get a good overview of what those classes are, what properties they have, as you can see here in the properties and methods box. Uh, you know, you can get properties, the functions that you have access to, and uh, the syntax that you need to do to call those functions. It's just good to have an idea of you know, these sort of core classes that you're going to be using on a fairly regular basis. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump right into our script. What the script is going to do is it's going to take this expression uh, and it's going to apply it in a very specific way to our After Effects comp. Now, just uh, you should probably just take a look at uh, Jesse's tutorial just to get an idea of the setup that you need to be able to apply this functionality. But basically how it's going to go is you're going to have a base layer, which is going to have your animation. And it's also going to have a time offset slider, which is going to control how uh, long after the original animation each layer is going to start its animation. And the way that it works is that you're stacking layers. So if layer two is half a second behind our base layer, then layer three is a half a second behind layer two, and layer four behind layer three, and so on and so forth. First thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to create a variable, uh, this comp, and we're going to make that equal to app.project.activeItem. And what this is, is a shortcut to the current comp that we're looking at. And the reason that I call it this comp is, as you can see from the expression, that's the, the name of the current comp within the expression language. So it sort of makes a nice parallel so that when you see this comp in your scripts, it means the same exact thing as this comp in your expressions. Okay, so now that we have our comp, the first thing that we want to do is add our slider to the top layer, or the layer that is in position 1. So you do that by typing this comp.layer1. Now, the layer function uh, is a one-based index of the layer. So layer 1 is the top layer, and however many, if there's nine layers, layer 9 is the bottom layer. So we would say this comp dot layer dot effect, and that's how we access our uh, the effects for that layer dot add property, and now we're going to give it a string which uh, is a shortcut to that specific property, and then and this is what's referred to as a match name, and for the slider control, the match name is actually A D B E Adobe slider control. And then we close parentheses, and that adds a slider to that specific layer. So layer one, the top layer, a slider has just been added to it. Now we want to actually do something to that slider, so we'll say var slider, we'll put it in a variable so that we can easily access that and change values. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll just set the name of the slider so it, it, it has some sort of meaning so that when you come back and look at this uh, later and you look at that slider, you know what that value does. Instead of just saying slider or slider 001, we know that specifically this is the time offset slider. And we're also going to give it a initial value. And so the way that we do that is the name of this variable is slider, but the value within the slider is actually stored in a variable called slider and to set that, we do dot set value, now, and then we pass that a string. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to say negative 0.5. So we'll just we'll just set it as a default value of half a second behind. So we do it negative so that it happens after the uh, original animation. So now we're going to add our expression to the script, and we'll do that by going var code. And I'm going to do a carriage return and open a string. And then we're basically going to say variable offset is equal to this comp. Now we see it's the same in the expression as it is in our script. So that's a nice little shortcut for us. Dot layer one, our top layer, dot effect. Now, since this is inside a string and we're doing a double quote, if I were to just do a double quote, that would close the string. So you basically have to escape the double quote so that it doesn't terminate your string uh, within your code. 
So then we access our effect by name. So we called it time offset slider up here. So we can just copy that and then paste it right there. And then we'll escape and then close our string again. And we're going to get the offset value is dot slider because slider is what holds the value for the slider control. And we're going to do a semicolon to uh, end the line. Now uh, we'll escape for a line break. And we'll say var t equals time plus offset. And what this says is that the, the time that this layer is going to look at is going to be equal to time, which is the current time, plus the offset. So if the offset is negative half a second and the current time is one second, our value of t is going to be half a second. Or if it's 24 frames per second, it's going to be at frame 12 is where we're looking. Uh, I forgot to escape the end of that line. Then we're going to say this comp dot layer index, which is the index of the layer that we're on, minus 1. So we're looking at the index 1 above, because if, if I'm 2, uh, index 1 is actually uh, above me. And we're going to uh, do the transform property of, we'll do position. And you see that we have to escape our double quotes like we did before. And we're going to say value at time t. And close our parentheses and put a semicolon to end that line. Um, and you can look at Jesse's tutorial to for a deeper explanation of this. But whatever is the last line of your expression uh, is going to be the value that is passed to uh, After Effects. So what we're doing here is we're saying the position of this current layer is the value of the position of the layer directly above it, where was it half a second ago, and that's going to be my position. So we've created our code. Now let's apply this expression to each of our layers. So we're going to do that by looping through all the layers, starting with the second layer, because we don't need to apply it to the first one. That's our, that's our base layer, our control layer. So we'll do that by saying for var i equals 2, because we're going to start with the second layer. As long as i is less than or equal to this comp dot layers dot length, and that's how many layers does this comp have, and we're going to only iterate through those. And then every time we iterate, we say i plus plus, so we just add 1 to i. And that creates our for loop. Now within this for loop, for every value of i, we're just going to apply the expression to the position value of that current layer. So we'll say this comp dot layer of i, so starting with 2 through the end of the layers, we want to say dot transform dot position, excuse me, dot position dot expression equals code. And that's it. So now this is our this is our entire our entire script. So this will execute and as long as you have your your comp set up the right way, uh, this will execute properly. So we'll save, we'll call this time offset expression script or whatever you want to call it and we're actually going to put this in the scripts folder. So we hit save. We're going to have to quit After Effects because every time you add a new script to that directory, After Effects needs to reload it. And uh, the only way to do that is by opening After Effects again. So we're going to create a new comp. Let's just do our little setup here. So we'll take our rectangle tool and we'll make a shape, a square. Just for a little bit of style, we'll give it a, a, a bevel. Uh, we'll make that a little bit bigger. And we'll just scale it down a little bit. And we also, just for ease of use, let's put the anchor point right at the middle of the square. So we move the anchor point by hitting Y, which is our pan behind tool, anchor point tool. Um, and then you just grab the anchor point and put it where you need it. So then we're going to go and we're going to set the position at time 0. 
And we'll put that here. We'll move ahead a little bit. We'll change the position. Let's give this movement a little bit of personality. Move it around, make it look nice. We actually want this to just sort of loop back and forth, just ping pong back and forth. So to do that, we open our expression. So you alt click on the uh, stopwatch to open the expression control. And we're gonna say loop out ping pong. So basically what that's going to do is going to, between these two keyframes, it's just going to go back and forth. And as we can see, it just goes back and forth. Let's duplicate this layer. And we're going to hit U to see what's been changed. And we're going to shut off the animation and remove that expression. So now on, the only thing that's moving is our base layer. Now we're going to duplicate that a whole bunch of times, and then we're gonna execute our script. So we execute the script by going to File, Scripts, and then we find the name of it, Time Offset Expression Script, and just click on it. And it will automatically apply that functionality uh, to the layers. And as you can see, if I hit zero to render, and you see how it's sort of rendering slowly because when you render something that has an expression, every frame needs to be reevaluated. It's not like baking in keyframes where it's a one value. You actually have to calculate what the position value is every time. But as you can see, it applies. It, it looks a little bit wonky, but it applies that behavior to our script. So that's it, right? That's all we have to do. Now we're done and we can walk away. Well, there's actually some things that we can do that can make this work a little bit better. It's kind of a pain to every time you want to do it, you have to do file, scripts. You know, I have a ton of scripts, so you have to scroll through a whole bunch, and then let's go to time offset expression and apply it. But what if we could create a window that had a button that we just press the button and it applied to whatever comp we're currently on? So we could load up 10 comps, and just select each one at a time and click the button and it would apply this functionality to that comp. So, and that's actually really, really easy to do. So let's go back to our, our script. The only thing that we need to do to turn this into a UI enabled script is this line right here. This.layout.layout true. And what this says is this.layout is the layout manager. And if we go back to our object model viewer and we go to our script UI classes, we can actually scroll down here and we find that here is our layout manager. So, and it's got this function called layout. And you know, you can read about what it does, but basically if you pass it a value of true, it will show the window. And if you pass it a value of false, it will close the window. So now this is a UI-enabled script, uh, but there's no UI, so it can't do anything. So we're just going to add a button to this UI, and that's actually really easy to do. The way we do that is we say var button, and we want to put it in a variable because we're going to do things to it afterwards, so we want a shortcut to be able to access it uh, easily. So to add the button, we just say this.add, and add is a function that, you know, you can add any sort of UI type thing. The first argument is what type is it? It's a, a string, and it's a button. The next argument actually doesn't apply to buttons. This is where you would pass that argument, but for a button, you know, you don't need it, so you can just pass it undefined. And then the final thing is text, which in the case of a button will be the text that displays on the button. So we'll just say apply offset expression because you want to use uh, a, a title or text that makes sense, that tells you what it's going to do. And then we close that off and now we have a button. Okay, so now that we've created our button, we need to tell our button what to do when we click it. And we do that through what's called an event handler. And so we do button.onClick equals function. And then we're just going to enclose all of this code that we just wrote within that function call. Uh, so onClick is an event handler. And basically what that says is when uh, the button gets clicked, this is the code that I want executed. And this code, it's a, you want to pass it a function, so that's why we did function. And then anything that's within these braces is the code that's going to be executed. And it won't be executed until you click the button. 
Okay, so now that we're done with the UI portion of the script, we're going to do a save as, uh, and instead of saving it in the scripts directory, we're actually going to save it in the script UI panels directory. So we save, and since we've just saved that, we have to restart After Effects, so we're not going to save. We'll restart it, and let's create a new composition. We'll just keep it at the defaults, and so now that After Effects is reopened, the way that we access something with a UI component is through the window drop-down. So as you can see, there's sort of the standard things up top like Align, you know, Info, Tools, you know, Comp, Project, all these, these windows that we're used to seeing. But, but below that, you have a list of uh, different windows that you can open. And these are all the scripts that live in the script UI panels directory. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a, a ton of scripts here, but if we scroll all the way down, we get to our time offset expression script. So let's click on that, and it's going to open a window, as you can see right here, uh, that's got our button that says apply offset expression. Now, you know, you can sort of resize these, or you can, you can grab it here, and you can dock it against something else, so it's got its own window and you know let's say you added it to something and you want to make it free floating again you basically just go to this fly out menu right here click and you say undock panel and that takes the panel out and makes it its own window so we've got our UI so let's I'm going to quickly set up the comp to be uh, the way it was before with our animation so now we have it set up as you can see we have our base layer which is doing its animation but uh, and then a whole bunch of other layers that that aren't doing anything uh, and so if we want to now apply that functionality, all we have to do is go up to here and click this button. And voila, as you can see, it creates your animation with that offset. So that, that took all of that code and, and what you might have to do for, let's say you have 10 layers and you have to copy and paste the expression to every layer and it takes all of that functionality and uh, puts it into the click of a button, which is great. And this is very powerful. If, if you're somebody who goes online and you pull expressions down or you do you know, animation techniques that you do all the time, scripting is a great way for you to bundle all of that functionality into a single place uh, that can be applied very easily and customized with, with inputs or checkboxes or drop downs. So this is a very powerful tool that you can use. But there's actually one thing that we want to add to this script to make it perfect as it is. Let's say in the course of creating your script, you know, you're going to go through different iterations where, you know, you write your script, you write the functionality, and then you test it, and it might not always work first time out of the box. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, if it doesn't work, you want to reset your comp back to the state it was in just before you applied that script. But if you apply this script and then you hit your, con your command Z and see what happens, you'll actually see that every line of code that gets executed becomes its own undo point. So, so you see there each command Z only affects one single layer. So we want to treat clicking this button as one event. So if I click this button and something goes wrong, I want to just hit Command Z once and it sets me up back to the state of the comp directly before I clicked the button. And it's actually very easy to do that. What you do is you create an undo group. So we'll go here back to our script and in our onClick function, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a undo group and we do that by typing app dot begin undo group and we're going to give it the name time offset expression so this is our undo group that's the beginning of our undo so anything that happens after this is going to be part of one undo operation so then we'll go down to the bottom of our functionality and we actually have to just say where the undo group ends and we do that by typing app dot end undo group and that's it. And so once the script has been loaded into the script UI panel, you know, you, you saved it to that directory, you closed After Effects and reopened. Uh, the great thing about that is if you make changes to the script after that, you don't actually have to close After Effects and reopen it because After Effects already knows about the script. It just needs to reload that code. Uh, and the, the way to do that is you just close the window 
and you go back to window and you open up our time offset script. Every time you click on it through the window drop down, it will read the code that is in that file as if it were reading it for the first time. So you can make changes, close the window and then reopen it and those changes will become live right then and there. So when we apply our time offset expression, we see that we get the proper animation, but when I hit Command Z, it goes back to right before I applied it. So we don't have to Command Z for every layer that we've applied the expression to. So that's a that's a, just a nice little clean way to write your scripts that that work for you and make it easier to you know if you try new functionality and it doesn't work out, you don't want to have to hit Command Z you know 33 times just to get it back to uh, the state it was before you hit it. So. Thus ends our scripting tutorial. So check back soon, and uh, I, you know if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments, and you know let's get a discussion going about this stuff because there's so much to be learned, and and I'd love to answer any questions that you have. So uh, thanks again, and check back, and uh, we'll see you soon.